Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this this morning. Uh, yesterday, as I was kind of working my way through my sermon, I thought I didn't really miss this part last Sunday, but I missed getting together for worship. You know, I missed the gathering on Sunday morning, but. I don't know if I would ever miss sermon preparation. <laughs> That's a terrible thing to have to admit, isn't it? <clears throat> but it's, it was nice to have last Sunday off and be able to spend with, with family and everything that way. And, but it's good to be together with you as family of God as well. Um, <clears throat> in, our, <clears throat> in our prayers this morning... We'll remember and pray for the family of Julie Holverson and the family of Ron Berkhold, um, as well as our others that we continually pray for, just uh, to let them know that you know, we think about them and their sorrow and, and share, their, share their grief that way. On this um, Christ the King Sunday, our opening hymn is number 170, Crown Him with Many Crowns. And we're singing just the first four verses. I invite you to join me as we come to God. Let us pray. O God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right, and the strength to serve the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, 
and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <coughs> Our first reading this morning is from the Old, Old Testament prophet of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verses 11 through 16, and 20 through 24. And this is, he's, God is talking as a shepherd looking for his sheep, and, and we in the gospel Jesus talks about the shepherd separating the sheep and the goats. Ezekiel writes, For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all of the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations, and I will gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on mountains of Israel, and in the ravines and in all the settlements of the land. I will tend to them in good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and there they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep, and I will have them lie down, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. But the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says to them. See, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you shove with flank and shoulder, butting all the weak sheep with your horns until you have driven them away. I will save my flock, and they will no longer be plundered. I will judge between one sheep and another. I will place over them one servant, my servant, one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them. He will tend them and be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Here ends our first reading. Our second reading is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. And Paul is writing and giving thanks for the people in Ephesus in their faithfulness. For this reason, ever since I have heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus, your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be the head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Here ends our second reading. Our gospel for today is from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. I invite you to stand as you're comfortable standing. This is, these are some of Jesus' final words in his speech to the disciples. Uh, shortly after this, we find him anointed at Bethany and uh, betrayed and, and all of those things that we read about at Easter time. Jesus says, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory, all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people, one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. 
He will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on the right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison or visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it for me. And then he will say to those on the left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger, or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did not do to one of the least of these, you did not do it for me. Then he will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated, and we sing hymn number 241, We Praise You, O God. As I read this gospel passage over the course of this last week, a couple things kind of came out, just jumped out a little bit at me. And I just want to read again just the first little bit here. When the Son of Man, that's how Jesus refers to himself, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, so just as Jesus could have called down the heavenly host of angels as he was being crucified, he, you know, he could have called down the army, the legion of angels, but he didn't. But when he comes again at the end of time to judge the nations, the holy angels will be with him. And then he will sit upon the throne of his glory. And I thought about that too. He sits upon his throne of his glory. And we sing a song, In the cross of Christ I glory. We talk about the glory of Christ being on the cross, that he followed God's will, that he did what was needed to do. The glory of Christ is that he trusted in God enough that he could suffer and die on the cross for you and for me. So he came 
with all of the holy angels, and he is seated, seated at the throne of glory. All nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them. He will judge them. And as it talks about all the nations in here, this is talking about the Gentiles. This is talking about the people that don't know Jesus. So he's talking about the end of time when, when that happens and the judgment day comes, that Jesus will be the judge. And we talk about getting to the pearly gates and who do we say we're going to meet there? St. Peter, right? That's who, you know, we're going to meet St. Peter at the gate. No, we're going to meet Jesus at the gate. Jesus will be there judging. He will be the one that welcomes us or says, you know, he will be the one separating those who have followed and done God's will and those who haven't. And so he says, he says that he will judge as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats and he will set the sheep on the right and the goats on the left. And then verse 34, then the king will say to those, so he says, when the Son of Man has come into his glory, he will judge, and then the king. So he, and the king is capitalized. He's referring himself now as the king. And I thought about as he was examined before he was crucified. And Pilate said, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. And Pilate says, so you are a king then. You know, so Jesus, the king. He starts out as the Son of Man referring to himself because he is Son of Man living on this earth, also Son of God from eternity. And the King, the one who sits on the judgment throne, the one who has been raised up by God to that position of power and authority. <clears throat> and then he gives the, and then he talks about how he judges. <clears throat> and we're familiar with all of these terms of judgment. How you how the, how the righteous, the ones that are the sheep, the ones that are at the right hand, have taken care of the poor and the needy and the hungry and the, and the, and the thirsty and those that are sick and those that are in prison. And they say to Jesus, when did we do that? When did we see you? And it reminded me of several different stories and things that I've read that as a person is standing and talking to someone maybe not really wanting to be in that person's presence, all of a sudden has this feeling of God or Jesus being present beside, beside him and realizing that maybe, maybe this person, for whatever reason, maybe this was Jesus standing there. So maybe we interact with Jesus at times that we don't think about, times that we don't know. Times that we smile at somebody or help somebody out when they need a hand. We've got several boxes in the entryway of the church that are there for people less fortunate than ourselves. It's our way of, of reaching out. It's our way of doing, doing God's will. Jesus says you'll love one another as you love yourself. And, and so all of this living is hard because we don't know always just who we should be looking out for and who we shouldn't be and I'm I'm pretty sure that as I watch TV in the next month or so especially I'm going to see a lot of commercials with a voice just soft and pleading that's just going to break my heart for these dogs and cats and animals and the environment and all of these needs and and I understand I understand those needs but as I as I hear those and as I watch those I wish that those pleas were made for the people that are in prison the people that are sick the people that are ill the the food pantry, so much more. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with caring for all of God's creation because God gave us dominion over all of the animals, the earth, and everything. He asked us, he commanded us to care for them. But the pleas that are there are, 
I mean, they almost want to, they almost make you want to cry sometimes. I mean, they really can pull on your emotions, and that's the intent. And so I think that if we read this passage of Jesus, as he says to these that didn't do anything, you, you, don't, you don't read it with an angry voice. You don't, you don't read it... Um, You don't read it that when I was hungry, you gave me no food. When I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I mean, I don't, you don't want to read it that way. You want to read it, when I was hungry, you gave me no food. When I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. When I was sick and lonely and in prison, you didn't visit me. You didn't care. And, we, and, and, and I can just, that's the Jesus I know. That he wouldn't be standing there, sitting at the gate or whatever he is, this king on his throne surrounded by the angels. He wouldn't be there with anger in his voice. He would be there with compassion. He would be there with, with that sense of regret that the people didn't have enough decency to take care of others in their need. And when we come, especially at Christmas time, we think so much more about the needs of others. And we will hear pleas from the Red Cross and from Salvation Army and from Samaritan's Person and from so many other great organizations that do so much good. But so often they won't have quite the, the heart-wrenching pull of those that, that are asking for us to care for these animals. And, uh, you know, not that there's anything wrong, as I said, with caring for the animals. But to be people of God, to be people that care, to be people that see the needs of a community and reach out, to see that my neighbor needs a little bit of help, and I can do that, and to do it graciously without wondering about, am I going to get repaid? As I was reading different things about today's scripture, I read a story of a young mother who was just barely scraping by and wondering what Christmas was going to bring. And one night the doorbell rang and she came to the door and found gifts wrapped for the kids and bags of groceries. Nobody there. But this is what God would ask us to do. This is what Jesus is talking about in this parable, this story that he tells about when the king is making his judgments. He will look upon our hearts. He will look upon our minds. He will look at what we do. And I said as they started this that Jesus is talking about judging the nations, the Gentiles, those who don't believe in him. Even though in John 14, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is saying that even for some that don't know me, I will judge their actions. I will judge their deeds. I will judge their hearts. And if they have served me and served my people, theirs will be the kingdom of heaven. It's kind of hard for me to think about that. That somebody that doesn't know Jesus at all, you know, that Jesus will look upon them as faithful, as doing God's will. But then when I think a little bit more about it, I think how great that is. That, that the door isn't just automatically closed because maybe somebody in some far off remote land has not yet heard about Jesus. I know a couple who are missionaries in the Philippines. Luke and Ruth Schroeder are their names. Ruth is a Filipino and Luke is not. They've been there for many years. And the first thing that they've had to do as they go to some of the islands is to learn the different dialect, learn the different language. And the Bible is not written in many of those languages. And many of those people have not heard of, the, of Jesus Christ. So they have an insurmountable task there ahead of them. And in the Philippines, it was 
there are so many islands in the Philippines that if you visited a different one every day, it would take you like over 20 years to be on every one. Think about trying to reach the people, trying to teach the people about God, trying to teach them about Jesus and the love that Jesus has for them. So I think about that insurmountable task that we as Christians have to spread the word of God, to spread the word of Christ, knowing that maybe when the end of time comes, we still won't have reached everybody, but that everybody will be judged by the King, by the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, who sits on the throne. And they will be judged by the actions of their hearts, by the thoughts in their minds, by the compassion that they've had for others. So many people will find themselves in this place of eternity that maybe have never heard the word of God's love, the word of Jesus Christ, how we worship and celebrate at Christmas time his birth, and how we celebrate the resurrection and the promise of forgiveness and life everlasting. The glory of Jesus Christ sitting on his throne, the throne of mercy, the throne of grace, the throne of love. And that's this big old Bible with all of these words in it, the final message of it is God's love is for all. God's mercy is for all. And it's how we treat each other that is most important. It's the most important thing in our lives. It's how we treat our friends and our neighbors and the people we meet on the streets each day. And I thought about Bubba this week. You guys know who Bubba is guy that downtown San Francisco, dirty, dingy, stinky guy, but one of God's children. And I didn't really want to talk to Bubba, but he's had a lasting impact on who I am. And that's what God wants for each and every one of us, is that we can do something for someone else that will make their lives better. And that's what Jesus is talking about in this gospel to help someone else, give them a little bit of a lift when they need it, and to do it with love and compassion and no thought of what's in it for me. Let's pray. <clears throat> Gracious God, as we celebrate Christ as King on this final Sunday of the church year and prepare for next Sunday as we begin the season of Advent, preparing our hearts to celebrate the birth of your child. Help us to hear and help us to see the needs that are around us. Give us the grace, give us the compassion to be your hands and your feet. Help us to look upon those around us with eyes of love and grace. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We sing our offering response. We give thee birth. Come again to God in our prayer for the people. Are there any prayer requests in addition to what we, the people we normally pray for? Let's bow our heads and pray. Gracious God, as we unite our hearts, our minds, to come to you asking for your presence to be with us. We give you thanks for the gift of your Son, the Son of Man who will sit upon his throne surrounded by angels. And we ask that the love of Christ may live within us. We pray that same thing for the leaders of our country. We pray that same thing for all people throughout the whole world, that they would come to know the love of Christ, 
that they would come to know the grace that you have, that they would seek you out as you seek each and every one of us. We pray and give thanks for our medical professionals and ask that you continue to lead them, to give them strength as they care for those who are ill. Some of them work long and hard and strenuous hours and the stress is there for them. But give them the grace to have compassion and, and the necessary knowledge the, to, to give that healing touch and to be that caring ear, to be the one that is there with compassion. We pray again today as always for Shirley and Dean and Nolan and Sue and Nancy and Ryan and Debbie and Maxine and Jeannie, Martine and these that we mentioned silently before you. Grant your healing touch to be upon each of them and give them and their bodies the strength to, to get better and to, to continue to live in your life and in your glory. We give you thanks for Jesus' resurrection, for the promise of life everlasting. And with that, we ask your peace and your grace to be with the family of Julie Holverson, to be with the family of Ron Berthold. Anytime we have a family member, a friend, a member of our community that passes away, it affects more than just that person. It affects us all, Lord God. So I ask that you would give strength and comfort and to, to those who mourn this day. And as we come to this Christmas season next week, or that beginning with Advent next week, our hearts are often reminded of those who aren't with us, even more so, as we come to this time of joy. But the truth is, Lord, that when we mourn someone, it, it's there all the time. Sometimes not quite so to the front of our thoughts and our mind, memories, but our losses are always there. So help us to remember and help us to be thankful for those that have lived in, in our lives and who now live eternally with you. We pray for our military and our police officers and all who give so much of themselves, especially as we've just celebrated a day of thanksgiving I, I give you thanks that they sacrifice so much of their time and of their lives for the sake of our country and for our safety watch over and remove the demons from those that suffer from ptsd and are haunted by those nightmares of, of past things grant them your grace and give them peace of heart and mind it's hard to Imagine the struggles and, and the visions that they have. So grant them peace, Lord. I pray for our congregations here at Mabel and Sutton and at our Saviors and McHenry, that we may continue to, to thrive as, as your people, as your church, that we may be open and inviting to the community, that we may indeed do your will in the community. Bless us, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. And now we pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And this day and always, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. I forgot to mention Bob in my prayers. Uh, he's home, had something done on his knee again. He's got to be a brace a non-bending brace for two to six weeks and I'm thankful that Bob is home and
continue to keep him and his well-being in my thoughts and prayers as well. Our closing hymn this morning is number 328, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. <clears throat>